Hi everyone, welcome to Sailor. It's the last Monday of Lent, which means that our journey through simplicity is coming to an end. In the podcast, at least. One of the things that I've learned on this journey is that it doesn't just stop here. If I want to see a lasting effect on the way that I live my life and in my walk with Jesus, I know that these are things that I need to regularly practice. I don't want this to be the end point, but for it to be the beginning. How did you get on last week thinking about excess? For me, I think it's definitely screen time. I get so easily distracted and while away lots of time aimlessly scrolling. I notice the effect that it has on things that I think about, how I compare myself and how it saps up time that could be better spent pursuing the things that God has put in front of me, the things that I'm passionate about. It's hard facing the state of your inside sometimes, isn't it? And that's a bit of a caveat into today's episode, where we'll be chatting about being contented. We'll begin, for the last time, with reminding ourselves what simplicity is. The spiritual discipline of simplicity is to intentionally shed the things of this earth that are keeping you from fully experiencing the life God desires for you. Simplicity is letting go so that you can make more room in your life for God. It's creating margin and space in your life to breathe more freely and loose the chains of the world. It's making room in our lives so that we can actually see God and have heart-to-heart connection with him rather than money, possessions and a very busy calendar filling our line of sight between our eyes and his and stealing our peace and focus. I will stop and breathe in your presence Just breathe Just breathe Contentment is defined as a state of happiness or satisfaction. We like to be happy, don't we? It's one of the deepest desires of the human soul, and it's one that aches to be fulfilled. We try filling it and finding our identity in the things that we own, by how much money we have, the quality of our possessions, by consuming things that say they'll satisfy us and make us happy. But the thing is, that stuff is temporary and only makes us want more. Stuff can't fill the void deep within us, and that yearning for satisfaction and purpose that only God can fill, because he put that ache for him within us. So. What do we do with that desire to feel good and happy? Let's look at our pal Paul and what he says in Philippians 4. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul was living, breathing proof of the ups and downs of life. He knew what it was to be important and in the upper echelons of society. He knew what it was to be an outcast. He had experienced seasons of lack, poverty and hardship. And he had also lived in times where he had more than enough and everything he needed. Throughout his life, he learned how to be content whatever circumstances he found himself in. He learned that the deep soul satisfaction and contentment in Christ was to be content with what he had and who he was. It meant that no matter what his situation, even if he was in jail, which is the case when he writes his letter, it means he's at rest. Paul also speaks about learning to be content. It's not something he just summoned up from the depths of himself out of sheer will, but he learned from experience through a life lived in and formed by discipline and practice. Paul knew that possessions and influence and physical comfort and luxury couldn't satisfy. He learned that everything that he had was enough and that only Jesus could bring true satisfaction. Dependence on Jesus and knowing that he is the one who strengthens and empowers us and gives us all we need is central to walking in contentment. But it doesn't come easily, does it, walking in contentment? We're constantly told that there is something better health, wealth, beauty and jobs, and that we should take hold of our own desires lest we be deprived of the good stuff. That narrative breeds discontentment and we'll constantly be searching and trying to find fulfilment in who and what we are in the wrong ways. To take the example of Paul, we must walk in humility and in trust and dependence on Jesus. When we find and walk in contentment, we find the antidote to striving to find satisfaction in our lives and it's where we can begin our lives of simplicity. We can't have simplicity without contentment because we'll always be wanting more. 
Simplicity is a good marker in revealing what we believe about God, about others and about ourselves. When we begin to take steps in that direction, we're confronted with our internal reality, just like what I shared at the start. It's not always a pretty picture, but as we practice simplicity, as we walk in discipline, it refines and transforms us from the inside out. And as we allow ourselves to come undone, we'll find real freedom and true contentment. When we look deep inside us, at our core, and find Jesus there, we'll see that in him we have all that we need. But we must ask ourselves a question. Do I still believe that I need something more than him? Is my soul really content? Those questions will highlight what we value and what's important to us. They'll help us separate out our wants and our needs and release us from constantly chasing more and to be satisfied with what we have, where God has put us and who he has made us to be. And it's a constant process of realigning our hearts and minds. So what practical steps can we take to begin walking in contentment? Well, we can be thankful for what we have. Instead of focusing on our lack or what someone else has, we can speak out the good things in our lives. We can shift our perspective and the way we look at things. That's definitely one for me. And on that note, we can let go of comparison, the true thief of joy. I'm so guilty of it. Why do we compare the worst of ourselves to someone else's highlight reel? Comparison breeds discontentment. We can put into practice something from last week and deny ourselves things that we think we need and not give in to the urge to buy something when we're feeling sad or lacking or dissatisfied. And we need to sit in that place of discomfort and look at the root of what we're feeling and ask God to come into that place. We can give. Instead of clinging on to things or reserving what we have for ourselves, we can practice generosity. We can choose to bless others and show the heart of God and his love in a practical way. We can invest in and help others. The more that we give of ourselves and the resources that we have, the more content we'll be because we'll be less focused on ourselves. We can choose to be a blessing and share and invite others into the good that God has put into our lives. And remember, this is a journey. It's one that requires patience and perseverance. But as we press in, we truly will learn to live in simplicity and dependence on Jesus, the ultimate, the only one who can truly satisfy our souls. You satisfy my soul. You satisfy my soul. You satisfy my soul with your love. You satisfy my soul. You satisfy my soul. You satisfy my soul with your love. And you
Once you satisfy